What's up guys, welcome back to the channel Spare Parts, and today I'll be counting down the top 10 worst LEGO Star Wars sets of all time. For this list, it is an opinion list, but I try to make it very unopinionated, like, I really don't like the sequel movies, but that doesn't mean I put a bunch of sequel sets on this list, just because I didn't like it. I also won't be doing comparisons, like, if I don't like one Millennium Falcon, I won't have it on the list because it's not as good as the other ones. Like, that Millennium Falcon could be still better than a bunch of other LEGO Star Wars sets. So these are just the worst LEGO Star Wars sets, in my opinion. I tried to make it very unopinionated, but I also have to set some ground rules. This is kind of a long intro, but I'll tell you that I won't be including microfighters, and I won't be including those weird Technic models, or, like, the buildable characters that are, like, kind of Bionicle style, because then the list would be full of them. But anyway, let's get into it. So starting off the list at number 10, we have set number 7111, the Droid Fighter. This is basically a Vulture Droid that released in 1999, and this is a very tiny Vulture Droid, but the reason it's on this list is not because it's old, it's because it has no minifigures. Like, I really feel like a Battle Droid or something like that would be needed in this set. And they had minifigures back then, so I don't know why there isn't a minifigure in this set. And also, I don't really like the color scheme on the build. It's just not my favorite, and it seems like a lot of other people don't like it as well, so that's why it's at number 10. So at number 9, it is set number 75104, Kylo Ren's Command Shuttle. And this set, there is a better version of this set, but that's not why this is on the list. This set is just really inaccurate and lacks a lot of features that the set actually has in the movie. Like, in the movie, its wings are supposed to, like, fold out like this, and that is absent from this set. And the set is also supposed to be black. Like, in the movie, you can see it's black, and this one is dark gray. So I really don't know why they chose to make it this color, and I just feel like the set is really inaccurate. The minifigures are good though, so that's why it's so high up on this list. Number 8, we have set number 8015, the Assassin Droid Battle Pack. And this is a set that just comes with a bunch of Assassin Droids. Like, it's in the name. And I don't really understand why this is a thing. I would much rather have had a Bounty Hunter Battle Pack, which LEGO did make a couple years later. Or more than a couple years, but you get the idea. And I just, I don't really like the speeder build, and I don't like the minifigures included in the set. They're just battle droids with a different head. Basically, it is nice that you get some chrome ones, but still, it's just, I don't like the build, and I don't really like the minifigures. There's nothing really that exclusive about them. At number 7, we have set number 75237, the TIE Fighter Attack. Now, this set I have a bunch of issues with. One of the main ones being that the TIE Fighter looks really bad. I don't, I just, I don't want to include 4 plus sets on this list because the main purpose is not really to look accurate, but most of the 4 plus sets I looked at, like, I can understand why they went with this design. This one, I cannot. Like, I don't understand why the wings look like that. They should be more plated on the sides to make it actually look like a TIE fighter. It's just, like, they're so bare, it just looks weird. And, like, the ground command post isn't that impressive, but it's nice to get that Death Star piece thing. But, like, overall, I just, I do not like the build on the set. It's just, like, a throw-in side build and a really bad TIE fighter. The minifigures are okay, the TIE Fighter pilot looks really detailed, and it's nice to get an extra Rebel, but it's just a 4 plus set where they could have done much better. At number 6 we have 7257, the Ultimate Lightsaber Duel. I don't really know why it's named that, because it's like the Mustafar Lightsaber Duel. Kind of a weird naming there, you really wouldn't know what set it was if you just looked at the name. But the reason the set is on the list is, yes, the minifigures are very good with those light-up lightsaber things, but the batteries die in those eventually, but it, mainly it's the build I have problems with. It's just really flimsy and, like, doesn't really look like anything we see in the movies. Like, there's just a little bit of lava in the back. It's just a really not very well thought up build, and, like, the main play feature doesn't work very well, so kind of a big problem if that doesn't work. So overall, I just feel like the build isn't very good. The minifigures might be good, but the build is just really brings it down. At number five, we have set number 75284 the Knights of Ren transport ship. This is a set based on the Rise of Skywalker, which is a sequel movie. That's not why it's here. It's just a really bad build, in my opinion. It has barely any interior, and the minifigures aren't that great either. You just get Rey and two Knights of Ren. Well, if you were into collecting the Knights of Ren, this might be for you, but just the build is really bad. Like, there's just no interior. I love interior and builds, and this set just really lets you down. And really, that's the main reason it's on this list. I just... I feel like LEGO could have done so much better with this set. At number 4, we probably have a really unexpected set. You might have never heard of it, and that is set number 7184, the Trade Federation MTT from 2000. This is a very old set, so kind of giving it some grace here for some flaws it might have, but it has a blatant flaw that just drives me crazy. Half the set is like this dark gray and tan color, which is very inaccurate. 
I don't understand why because there's already some brown on the set so they had brown at this time. I know old brown was very fragile but I just think it would have looked so much better with more of that color. It does come with a bunch of battle droids though it's just the build is really bad and that's like the main thing you're getting a lego set for. Well for me at least is the build and the build really is not good in this set. Coming in at number three, we have set number 7680, and we are in the top three now, or really the bottom three, the worst of the worst, and that is the Twilight. This is a set I really do not like. It's very big and bulky, and a lot of people seem to agree with me there. And the minifigures aren't very good either. You get four, you get Anakin, Ahsoka, Rada, which is Jabba the Hutt's son, kind of a random character, but he does fit the scene when you watch the show. And then it also does include R2-D2. But like most of these minifigures you can get in other sets. I think you can get Rada in the 2008 ATTE as well, and Anakin and Ahsoka are nothing special. They're like the main characters of the Clone Wars, and R2-D2, need I say more. But really the set just doesn't have a very good interior, and it looks really bad in my opinion. It's very big and bulky, and not a lot of like tiled off parts. It's a lot of studs, and that can look pretty good on some models, but I really don't think it looks very good on this set. But I remember watching the Clone Wars and I really liked this ship, but I just don't think LEGO did a very good job. At number two, we probably have the ugliest LEGO set of all time, probably gets the medal for that, and that is the Ranther Escape. This is set number 75180, and it's a very open design. It's literally just a hallway with some, like, one room and then, like, a sliding door. Very interesting build. The minifigures aren't that great either. You get Han and Chewbacca and then some random gang members. You do get some of the Ranthers, but they don't really look that great. And it doesn't have a lot of functions. I just, I don't really like this build. It's a very, like, specific scene to base it on. Like, this never pops up again. I'm not even sure which spaceship this is a hallway of, but really, it's just not a very good build. And the minifigures aren't that great, so it's a really bad set. The number one worst Lego Star Wars set of all time is the First Order ATST. <laughs> this is set number 75201, and you probably already know about this set. It's very popular for being a very bad set. Basically, you just take an ATST and decapitate it, and you get this set. This set encapsulates everything Lego Star Wars fans hate about Lego Star Wars sets. It has spring loaded shooters, needless throw ins remakes it has a bunch of stickers like everything in this set is bad except maybe the minifigures i mean i don't know if you were into the sequel if you get captain plasma whatever her name is and you get rose and finn in their first order outfits when they're kind of sneaking all around the ship and you get bb8 which is nothing special he's in a lot of sets but like the main point of this set is it's an atst controlled by bb8 what? Like, I don't understand that. And you get this needless throw-in elevator thing that's just not very well built. It's just an awful set. It's like the exact same design as every single ATSD, but worse, because it doesn't have a head. So yeah, that's the worst LEGO Star Wars set of all time. And for some reason, it's actually really expensive now. Like, I looked at the pricings, and it's like $70, probably because of how famous it is for being bad. People really want it. Kind of strange. So there you have it guys, that was my list of the top 10 worst LEGO Star Wars sets of all time. If you disagreed with any of my opinions, feel free to comment down below. I tried to judge them fairly and not just pick a bunch of old sets because they can't hold up, and I feel like the old sets I picked for the list were kind of justly here because they seem like they could have done better. But anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.